Hello from OG Benchmarks. So I have finally completed my first Thin Mini ITX build. While researching these builds, I came across Intel's Thin Mini ITX design guide. It's almost 10 years old, and this video is going to highlight, one, what Intel envisioned for the Thin ITX format, and two, what has really happened over the past 10 years. Here is the image from the first page of Intel's guide on Thin Mini ITX builds. I believe this is the final version, version 1.2. It's the last I can find on the web. This document is still available on Intel's website. The link is on the screen. One gripe I'll mention, Thin Mini ITX. I get tired of saying Thin Mini ITX, but of course, that's what the standard is. The Mini ITX standard came first and is its own standard from around 2001. There are other ITX standards, Nano, Pico, and Mobile. So the Mini modifier is not really optional. In this guide, Intel is proposing a modified standard for Mini ITX, the Thin Mini ITX standard. So the name gets kind of long. I'll regularly say Thin ITX, but properly speaking, this should always be the Thin Mini ITX standard. One more thing, in this video, I'll alternate between calling Intel's recommendations a guide or a standard. Calling it a standard is too strong. Standards are adopted and endorsed. The Thin Mini ITX guide is just a recommendation on how to implement a tiny PC. There have been updates to this guide. The first edition came out in April 2012. Two other de updates followed, the last being 1.2 from December 2012. It added USB 3.0, which was new at the time, and EDP, Embedded Display Port. I can't stand EDP. I think this is the last update. The guide itself outlines possible solutions to creating a system utilizing a thin mini ITX motherboard. That's a quote. You can interpret this statement in many ways. Sometimes solutions are proposed because a problem needs to be fixed. Other times, people try to design a solution for which no problem actually exists. Either way, I think it's interesting to see how Intel envisioned the use of the thin mini ITX standard. I don't want to go too deeply into the Thin Mini ITX standard, but here's a quick look at some of the key ideas. On the left is a recent ASUS Thin Mini ITX board. From the top, it's the same size as a Mini ITX board, 170 by 170 millimeters. From the side view, at the bottom left, you might notice that the rear I.O. is rather short. This is the thin aspect of the board. Because the rear I.O. is short, the rear I.O. shield can also be short or low profile relative to the standard I.O. shield you would see on an ATX, MATX, or Mini ITX board. The low profile shield is around 25 millimeters tall instead of 45 millimeters tall. With a low profile I.O. shield, the entire enclosure for the system can be smaller, thinner, the Thin Mini ITX standard is much more than this slide, but visually, those are the key features. So what potential use did Intel envision for a Thin Mini ITX build? Some of the main uses are on this slide. We have the All-in-One, or AIO, PC. Next is the Home Theater PC, or HTPC, that has a similar footprint to standard audiovisual components for fitting in a stereo cabinet or TV stand. That will include a PC with a footprint of something like a DVD player. Next on our list is the VESA mounting of a computer to the back of a monitor. VESA stands for Video Electronics Standards Association. Another use is as a digital signage PC in which the PC is inside or behind a display. A use that does not get specifically broken out as a bullet point by Intel in its guide, but does get special mention in the document is the idea of a slim, tiny PC. 
Intel infers that a tiny PC is a PC with a case volume of less than 4 liters. All of these use cases overlap to some degree, so some of these distinctions are artificial. Ok, let's walk through each of these use cases and see how time has treated the thin mini ITX standard. All-in-one PCs. These are super common today. Two of my kids have them. The monitor and computer system are in the same enclosure. You can certainly imagine that a thin design of a motherboard would be helpful for this use case. If you look at AIO PCs, however, they certainly don't follow the thin mini ITX standard. The motherboards in these systems tend to be really big and just about have the same dimensions as the monitor itself. Here's an image of a motherboard from a Lenovo AIO. Like most AIOs, this is a proprietary design that ignores the thin mini ITX standard. So I'd say the use of thin ITX boards in AIO systems is a bust. That did not pan out for Intel. Before we leave AIO PCs, I do want to throw in one personal opinion about AIO PCs. And I say this as a person who has bought two of them. For AIO PCs, once any part on them fails or becomes obsolete, you lose your entire system computer and monitor. About the only things you can salvage from an AIO PC are the RAM and maybe the storage. AIO PCs don't take up much space, but they have no modularity. I wouldn't buy one again. Ok, let's look at another use case for Intel's thin ITX standard. Next we have the HTPC based on the AV component standard. Well, as it turns out, AV components don't have a true standard. AV components are typically up to 18 inches wide and 18 inches or less deep. That's actually a really large potential footprint. Furthermore, as electronics have shrunk over time, AV components have also gotten smaller. In the original documentation, Intel refers to DVD players having a standard format, a standard of around 18 inches wide. At, run, at one time, DVD players did fit this standard, but most don't anymore. DVD players now have a footprint not much bigger than a DVD itself. Not to mention, DVDs are kind of dead thanks to streaming. I only bring this up to point out how much can change in 10 years. Back to the slide, the blue square represents an 18 by 18 footprint, and the yellow square is the relative size of an ITX motherboard. Just 6.7 inches square. So a thin ITX board could easily fit within an 18 by 18 or smaller audio component sized case. No problem. What else would you put inside this component? With the thin mini ITX standard, Intel envisioned that CPU cooling would not involve a fan mounted directly over the CPU socket. Instead, heat pipes on the socket would draw the heat to a fin array that is actively cooled by a separate fan. This design involves some kind of sidecar setup as shown in this picture. The Intel guide actually has multiple designs like this one, each with its own arrangement of the heat pipe and fan system. These designs do require a larger footprint beyond the ITX board itself, but for an AV component with a relatively large footprint, this sidecar fan setup is not an issue. I mean, if we have 18 inches of width, the board is only about 7 inches and this fan is maybe 3 or 4 inches. We still have plenty of room. Personally, as one who is more accustomed to desktop computers, this sidecar design looks weird. This layout is the norm, however, in other thin compact devices, namely laptops. So this is the idea from 10 years ago. What do HTPCs and mini PCs actually look like today? Here is a mini PC that recently made its rounds on several YouTube channels like ETA Prime and the Toasty Bros. It was, and is, available on AliExpress. This is the top off view. The motherboard is an actual thin ITX motherboard, exactly what Intel hoped for. The impl implementation of this PC, however, is different. Note that the CPU has a standard CPU fan mounted over the socket. This is not the sidecar design. To the right is a low profile discrete GPU that mounts into a special PCI slot along the top edge of the motherboard. 
So this isn't an office PC. It has some legit gaming ability. Okay, how does this look closed up? Here is the closed system that has also been turned around to show the rear I.O. The upper edge on the left is the I.O. from the Finn Mini ITX motherboard. The video output on the right is from the two-slot GPU. The overall width of this mini PC is 280 millimeters. That's around 11 inches. That's still nowhere near the 18-inch limit for an AV component. The height of 65 millimeters, close to 3 inches, is also taller than a pure, thin design envisioned by Intel. Overall, I'd say this implementation of an HTPC or mini PC is a rejection of Intel's thin ITX standard. The standard gets another strike. So what's next? Vesa mounted PCs are kind of like an AIO in which the monitor is completely separate from the PC, which is still small enough to mount on the back of the monitor. You do see Vesa mounting of PCs, mostly in office computers, and some smaller but not tiny ITX cases boast about being Vesa mountable. Mounting can take various forms. In some instances, the PC case is directly screwed to the back of the monitor. In other cases, like the one on the screen, a caddy is mounted to the monitor and the computer is placed in the caddy. You can, in fact, find thin mini ITX computers used with VESA mounts. But there's nothing unique about thin mini ITX systems being VESA mounted. Small computers of all formats are mounted to monitors. One advantage to a VESA mounted PC over an AIO is that you can replace or upgrade your PC more easily in a VESA system over an AIO. Here is a next level twist on the idea of VESA mounting. Dell sells a computer that mounts to a monitor stand. This tiny black component is the PC. This is not a VESA mounted PC because VESA mounting uses specific mounting formats. Regardless, this is an example of having a PC that is small enough to hide nearly invisibly behind a monitor to minimize clutter and cables. I wouldn't say that VESA mounting is a boom or bust on the Intel thin ITX guidelines. It's kind of a push. How about digital signage? Honestly, I don't know much about digital signage. Everything I know is from about 10 minutes of searching the web. Digital signage is the kind of thing you see in conferences or hotel lobbies and airport terminals. Walls of monitors are used to show advertising or relevant information. From what I can tell, regardless of how Intel envisioned it 10 years ago, digital signage is dominated by large monitors that are controlled remotely through wireless technology. You do not need a local PC to manage the content of your large lobby or conference monitor booth. So while maybe I'm missing something here, I don't think digital signage is a meaningful opportunity for thin mini ITX PCs. This is a fail. Let's lastly look at the tiny or mini PC. In the Thin Mini ITX guide, Intel defines a mini PC as having a case volume of less than 4 liters. We've already seen the mini PC on the left. It's a case volume of about 3.6 liters. On the bottom is one of Intel's NUC PCs. NUC stands for Next Unit of Computing. The Nook shown has a motherboard that is even smaller than Mini ITX and the case volume is well less than 1 liter. These are definitely Mini PCs. Intel released its first Nook products back in 2013, just a year after publishing the Thin Mini ITX guide. It seems that Intel doesn't even follow its own guide for a tiny PC. To the right is an example of Lenovo's Think Center Tiny PC. The case volume is just over one liter. Dell and HP also have their own version of these tiny PCs. Dell has the Optiplex Micro and HP has the Mini. Of the, of the three on the screen, Lenovo's Tiny PC is closest to the Thin Mini ITX guidelines. I'd say the idea of 
thin ITX guide serving as a model for these tiny PCs is a push. Maybe a slight win for Intel. Based on the use cases we have discussed, I have to say that Intel's thin mini ITX standard as it was envisioned back in 2012 is kind of a bust. The fact that Intel started pushing its own alternate tiny PC, the Nook line, just after reporting the ITX standard doesn't help matters for Intel. To be clear, I just did a thin ITX build and I like it. Still, looking back at Intel's guidelines and seeing how the market has moved in the past 10 years, broader adoption of the guide has been weak. That explains why thin mini ITX components are hard to find today. In particular, motherboards are, sca are scarce, especially if you want to do an AMD build. AMD thin mini ITX boards, which would be perfect for some of their integrated GPUs, are very hard to find. Options for low profile coolers are very limited. Tiny PC cases that really minimize the case volume are also hard to find outside of AliExpress. With limited components, enthusiasm in the consumer market is going to be lukewarm. I love this form factor, but build options are few and far between. I hope you found this critique of Intel's thin mini ITX guidelines informative. The form factor has a lot of potential, but there are now many ways to build very small PCs. Please consider subscribing, liking, or leaving a comment. Take care.